On today's episode, it's a black and white conversion using Silver FX Pro 2, part of the Nick Collection. Today I'm working from Lightroom. I'm going to launch Silver FX Pro right here from Lightroom. But before I start, I want you to know that DxO is uh, offering a spring sale right now up to 30% off all software. And that includes like Photo Lab 4 and the Nick Collection. Silver Effects Pro is part of that Nick Collection. You can click on my affiliate link in the uh, description below that will send you over to the sale pricing. And uh, you can purchase the products. I make a small commission. Uh, you don't pay any more for the products. And it helps my channel out. And I really appreciate it when you do that. Okay, let's get started. Now, I really enjoyed this color image of this lily, and it's already processed. And I thought, let's make a black and white conversion out of it using my favorite piece of software for doing that, and that is Silver FX Pro. Now, when you're working in Lightroom, what you want to do is right-click on the image, come down to Edit In, and then find... Nick Silver Effects Pro 2, give it a click. And when you do a dialog box opens up, I'm going to send it out as a TIFF file in the Pro Photo RGB color space. That's the largest color space, and that's the one I use and the one I recommend. Uh, you have your choice of 16 bits or 8 bits. Uh, for the bit depth, and I always choose 16 bits. Now, the resolution, you could change that according to your needs. Now, for my particular needs, if I wanted to make a print, my Epson printer likes a 360 uh, resolution, okay? So I'm going to put mine on 360, and I'm going to do no compression, and I'm going to edit this as a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So all we need to do now is click Edit, and that'll launch Silver Effects Pro. And now we're in Silver Effects Pro. Now you'll notice I don't have my presets over here. If you click this icon right here, you can get your presets up. I'm not going to use a preset today. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants, so to speak. So this is just a neutral conversion right here. No edits on it whatsoever yet. Today I'm going to do things a little different. There's not many colors in this image. I think we have some pinks, greens, and some orange colors. So not a lot of colors. So what I think I'm going to do is come right down here to... The sensitivity and I'm just going to work with my sensitivities to get a nice contrast here so I'm going to work with red I'm going to try to move the red up first and see if that's the right direction no I think I want to darken the reds so I'm going to darken the reds I'm going to pull some contrast out and I'm looking right in these areas in here and also on these guys here so let's see here let's get a balance and let's work with yellows see if we have any yellows yeah we do have some yellows in there so I'm going to pull those back a good ways and now let's go to green green i think on the stem and maybe up in here a little bit let's try green let's lighten up the green darken the green i think i might darken the green a good bit and let's see no cyan in here so no use even messing with that and i don't think we have any blue either so we can double click this and set it back to the default position there definitely will be violet in here okay so it's giving me some nice contrast in here. So I'm going to work with that right there. So far, so good. Let's click to compare here. Here's the before and here's the after. So the before and after. So just pulling out a little extra contrast. Well, that's a starting point anyway. We can always come back and revisit this sensitivity again if we need to. Now let's go ahead and move back up to the top of the adjustments here. And now I'm going to start working with the brightness. Now, if you don't see all the controls that I have under my brightness, contrast, and structure, there's these little uh, drop-down deals here, these little triangles. Click these and you'll open up these extra adjustments. And I find these are very helpful to really give you very precise adjustments. So in brightness, we can work with our highlights. And let's see, do we want to pull our highlights back? Yeah, I think I'm going to pull my highlights back a little bit. Let's play with our midtones. And our shadows. I think what I'm going to do is open up my midtones and then pull my shadows back. Yeah, see how I'm getting these little dots on here, these on the, on the flower here to just kind of pop out, make them darker, adding a little more contrast. So I'm pulling up my midtones and then I'm pulling back on the shadows to cause that to happen. So somewhere right around there looks good. Now here's a dynamic brightness. And I'd like to refer to it as an intelligent control. It can give you some really great results. And I'm not going to do too much with this. Uh, 
moment. Do I want to do anything? Here's zero. Do I want to lighten it up any? Darken it down. I might just darken it down just a smidge here. And I'm like a minus 7%. I think that looks pretty good. Now really take your time with these sliders and, you know, move them around, move them left, move them right. You never know what you want until you actually see the effects when you make the adjustments. That's a very important tip. I mean, that may sound stupid, but it's really not. A lot of people don't do that, but you got to take your time. Try them one way, try them another way, just to see what looks right for you. And your eye will tell you when it's right. Okay, and now let's come down into the contrast area here now. We have uh, actual, just an actual contrast control here, which will give us overall contrast, okay, more or less. I'm going to double click it and get it back to the center because I like to play with these amplified whites, amplified blacks, and soft contrast inside of here. First, I'm going to try the soft contrast. If I move it to the right, it gives my image kind of a little bit of a glow and a really soft look, but it's becoming more contrasty to the right, and if I move it to the left, it becomes a little less contrasty. And just like the dynamic brightness, I like to refer to the soft contrast as more of an intelligent uh, contrast control. It can give you really great results, so give it a try. It's really worth the effort. But maybe right around a minus 8 looks good. Now, let's try our amplified blacks. It's not going to really do much here because I have a lot of contrast in this already. How about amplify whites? So I want to bring out those whites any. I might just bring them out a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy here and lighten up my lights too much. Now I'm, a, I'm going to use a lot of control points on this image here. So if you're not sure how control points work, this will be a good tutorial for you. And how about some overall contrast? Maybe just a slight amount of overall contrast, maybe right around there. Now there's some problems that I'm having and I think this area is too light so I'm going to use control points to fix it. But before I do that I'm going to play with structure. Now with structure we have an overall structure which will just work in all the tonal areas here of structure. I'm going to double click, click it and reset it back. But then it breaks structure down into highlights, midtones, and shadows. So let me start to pull the highlights up. Now watch in this area right in here. You'll see things starting to sharpen up. See that? See how things sharpen up right in here? Now, I don't want to go too crazy here, but I can add a little bit of extra texture in there. Now, if I move it to the left, I can take texture away if I want a more softer look, but I want a little bit of texture in there. Not a whole lot, but maybe right around there. Now, this is going to target the midtones. And check these areas out in here, the midtone areas here. When I pull this up, See how we start seeing some textures starting to pull out in there, which is really nice. And now we have shadows. Do we want any shadow texture? Now, I love what's happening under here. I don't think I want too much shadow texture. I'm going to use a control point to get it under there. Let's see. What do I want here? I might just want... I do want a little bit of it. Maybe something like that. And now fine structure will be more like a sharpening. So let's just watch... Watch in this area here as I start to move the fine structure up. See how it looks sharp and it gets kind of grainy looking here, real crunchy. So I don't really think I want any fine structure. Now don't forget you can always move these to the left if you want to take some of that out of there. But I think I'm just going to leave it at the default setting of zero. The next thing I want to work on are some problem areas like... Uh, Right in here, this area is too light here. It's drawing my eye. I want to tone this down. I'm going to bring some structure out here. And there's some other areas over here that I think are too light. I'm going to work with and I'm going to use control points to do that. Control points are awesome. And to me, they're a big part of all the NIC software. Just about every piece of their software has some type of control point in it. And so let me go ahead and come to the selective adjustments and click this icon here and grab a control point. And you can see my little point right here. So I'm going to click right here. Now you'll notice we have a bunch of adjustments with this control point. And then you have this little arrow here. You can click this and you got more adjustments. Okay, so you got brightness, contrast, structure, uh, amplify whites, amplify blacks, fine structure, and selective colorization. So what I want to do is pull this light area back. I'm just going to take this brightness control slider and slide it back. And look how it just pulls that back. And then we have this circle of influence, which you can cause it to grab more of those areas that are similar in lightness and pull them back. But I only want to grab the area right, right in here. 
And you can see how it's affecting it as I move this, right? And so just adjust it to where it looks right for you and right there for me. Now, if you want to make another uh, brightness adjustment, like pull another area down, like right here, I can hold my Alt or Option key down and click it and drag it with my mouse all the while holding my Alt or Option key down and then release it when you get to where you want it. And it'll just copy that control point and move it up. Okay, and then maybe right here it's a little light, so I'm going to do that again. Hold my, I'm on a max, I'm holding my option key down, I'm holding it down and click left clicking with my mouse and I'm dragging it over here. Now, if it's too dark there, I can readjust the brightness here and just pull it up a little more. And so now I can play with that and I can play with the area of influence here and just target the area that I want to. So now let's come over here, see where it says selective adjustments. You can see here's the before. And here's the after. Isn't that really cool? And if it's going into an area you don't want it to go to, you can just grab a control point like this and click right here. And it, when, without an adjustment on it, that is called a negative control point. And it just counteracts any adjustment that may have leaked down into this area. So pretty cool adjustment right there. Another thing I want to do is pull some structure out here. So let me grab another control point and I'm going to put it right here. And... I'm going to take the uh, structure control and start to bump it to the right. And see how I can pull that structure out under there? Isn't that neat? Just like so. This area over here I thought was a little bit light, so I'm going to grab another control point, put one right here, and take the brightness and just pull it back a little bit, like so. And I'm going to copy it, holding my Option key down and dragging it over here to copy that point. I'm going to pull this one down a little bit more. Now, I don't want it to affect under here so much, so I'm going to get another point. This will be a negative control point that I'm going to put right here. See, that'll lighten that up. But now I think it's too light, so I'm going to darken it down just a little. That's way too much, Dave. Maybe... These can get out of control here if you're not careful, so drag them slowly. Maybe right around, like, yeah, like a minus three, somewhere around in there. Now, I'm thinking, what if I can pop a little bit of structure down here? So let's grab another control point, put one right in here. I'm going to pull my brightness back just a little bit. And now let's pull up some structure. Isn't that cool? A little bit of structure in there. Not too much, but just a little bit. Now, this right here, I think I want to darken a little bit. So I'm going to put a... Control point here and just pull back on the brightness a little bit here. Now, I don't want this area to be affected, so I'll put a negative control point right here. And let's see, I'm going to put some structure into here just a little wee bit. Because if you recall, remember I was working with the uh, structure controls, the highlights, midtones, and shadows, and I adjusted them, but I just feel I need a little more structure right here. Just a tiny wee bit. And I might see what happens with a little bit of contrast. Yeah, a little bit of contrast in there. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Brings out some more definition in here. And I may want to darken this area right in here a little bit. So let me grab another control point right here. And I'm going to add some contrast in there. Yeah, really right around there. And let's see. I don't want to affect it in here. So I'll put a negative control point right there. There we go. I might just mm, slightly darken it. No, I've changed my mind. I'll reset it back to zero. I think that's going to be best. So let's take a look at these selective adjustments. Let me shut them off. So here's before and here's after. Isn't that cool though? Now this area looks a bit light. So I'm going to grab another control point and I'm going to start to pull the brightness back on that control point. So I'm going to pull that back a little bit because I want our eye to come into this area right in here. And I might just add a little bit of structure in here. Okay, just a tiny wee bit. And is this area too light? I don't know. It might be not really, I don't think. But let's throw a control point there and play. What I might do is throw a little structure in here. A little bit of structure and maybe a little bit of contrast. Tiny bit of contrast, and let me see. Do I want it lighter? I don't think so. Maybe a little bit darker. Maybe around a minus nine. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Now, if you need to uh, control three points at once or four points at once, 
You can put a bounding box around them like this. I'm just left clicking with my mouse and then I can take these and I can lighten them up to the right or I can darken them all down together simultaneously to the left. So I might just darken that whole area down a little bit. And everything's looking good, but I think it's a little light right there. Am I getting nitpicky? Yeah, I'm getting nitpicky because, hey, this is all part of crafting, crafting your image, right? You want it right. And take your time. Spend a lot of time and enjoy yourself. It's all part of the joy of editing. And now let's take a look at the before and after the control points. Here's the before and here's the after. So I think it really helps. Control points can really help you craft your image. Well, I'm pretty happy with these results. Let's take a look. Here's the before with just the standard uh, black and white conversion. And here's the after. So I'm really happy with that. I think I got a nice high contrasty flower image here. Now I have a lot more adjustments that I can make if I wanted to. Like for instance, I could come back into sensitivity and retweak these guys here and get things looking just the way I want them to look. Like maybe I'll play with my yellows a little bit more. And I highly recommend that you go back and you take the time to tweak things and get it looking just right. I know we're living in the fast-paced world of artificial intelligence, uh, Instagram filters and things like that, but I enjoy taking the time and crafting my images out because when you do that, you know what? This is your art. You're working on it. And take that time and pull out of that image what you want to express through it. You'll be happier and the people that view your images will really be thankful for the work that you put into them. Now, I could spend a lot more time processing this image, but you know what? This tutorial would get too long, so I'm going to stop at this point because I'm happy with it. I think it looks really good. You know, I could come down here and add some finishing adjustments on it. I could work with levels and curves if I needed to. Uh, I can do some split toning. Uh, I don't need a vignette because I have a black background, you know. Um, other than that, I could add uh, frames to it, but I'm happy with it. I like it. And when you're happy with it and everything looks good, all you need to do is come down here where it says save. Give that a click. That'll save it out and send you right back into Lightroom or Photoshop, wherever you started from. Well, there it is. Silver Effects Pro 2. I love black and white images. I love black and white photography. I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining.